We've spent considerable time in this episode looking at advanced modalities, particularly in the management of the patient with a diabetic foot ulcer. We've looked at dermal skin substitutes and the use of dermograft in the management of these patients. Let's look at another advanced modality, hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Why is hyperbaric therapy important in the management of patients with a diabetic foot ulcer? Well, oxygen is critical in all phases of wound healing. We know that the hemostatic phase stops the flow of oxygen. The inflammatory phase consumes oxygen, while the proliferative phase requires oxygen. Clearly, without the delivery of oxygen, these patients will not heal. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy is simply the delivery of 100% oxygen to that patient while the patient is completely enclosed in a pressurized environment. What is not hyperbaric therapy? Well, topical oxygen. These extremity chambers, the oxygen boot bag or butt bag, is topical oxygen, not hyperbaric, and the two should not ever be confused. What are the mechanisms of action for hyperbaric therapy? Well, under normal baric conditions, at one atmosphere, breathing air, all of our oxygen essentially is bound to hemoglobin. Very little is floating, saturated in the plasma. However, under hyperbaric conditions at three atmospheres, we don't change the binding of the hemoglobin, but we do force oxygen to physically dissolve into the plasma to the tune of nearly six volume percent. Now this translates for us at a cellular level in a large way. Under normal baric conditions at the end arterials, there is an area we call ischemia. This is where oxygen is unable to diffuse to, and these ischemic zones can become quite large and compromise tissues, especially when there is infection or trauma or peripheral arterial disease, as seen in our diabetic patients. And patients can lose tissue, it can become gangrenous, and they can go on to amputation. However, under hyperbaric conditions, we have overlap of those ischemic zones because there is a large increase in the amount of oxygen that's dissolved in the plasma, thereby increasing the diffusion gradient and getting rid of those areas of ischemia. Hyperbaric therapy can be delivered in two fashions. The multi-place chamber, pressurized with air, where the patients breathe oxygen either by mask or hood, or the monoplace chamber that is completely pressurized with oxygen and the patients breathe the ambient environment. Now, hyperbaric therapy has many uh, effects, both at a cellular and tissue level. We've already talked about tissue hyperoxygenation and reversal of tissue hypoxia. But in addition, hyperbaric therapy has been shown to stimulate angiogenesis. It is antimicrobial and antioxidant, and it is also known to upregulate uh, growth factors. There have been a number of studies that have been put into the literature. This one by Foglia was a randomized trial looking at 70 patients with diabetic foot ulcers. 35 patients were placed in each group, the hyperbaric group compared to the control or standard management group. The hyperbaric group showed a marked decrease in amputations. Only 8% of the patients in this group were amputated compared with 33% of those patients in the control group. This data was statistically significant. A more recent study put into the literature by Londell in 2010, published in Diabetes Care, was another randomized control trial of 94 patients with diabetic foot ulcers. These patients were also randomized to either receive hyperbaric or placebo control. If you look at the data, you see significant healing in the hyperbaric group compared to the control group. And this data was even more impressive. Those patients exceeded 35 hyperbaric treatments. Now, CMS has looked at this literature and they have determined that hyperbaric is an appropriate utilization for uh, the management of diabetic foot ulcers and they've provided coverage in this area. However, strict criteria have been established prior to initiation of hyperbaric therapy in these patients. These patients need to be diabetic with Wagner grade three ulcers or higher and they have had to fail 30 days of standard wound care. I'd like to suggest to you at the conclusion of this session uh, a management protocol for the utilization of hyperbaric therapy in these patients with diabetic foot ulcers. As mentioned, they need to be Wagner 3 or higher and they have to have had uh, the standard elements of standard wound care met, vascular status evaluation, intervention when appropriate, attention to nutritional and glycemic control, debridement, appropriate dressings, appropriate offloading, and clearly resolution of infection if this is present. If these standard elements of wound care have been met, then we need to assess whether or not the patient has improved, i.e. has the wound decreased in size in 30 days. If they haven't improved, 
Despite aggressive use of standard wound care, hyperbaric therapy may be indicated for these patients. I hope this session, Hyperbaric Highlights, has been helpful to you and will guide your clinical practice as you move forward in the management of diabetic foot ulcer patients.